Our message this morning is entitled, Oh, How We Need the Shepherd. Amen? Oh, how we need the Good Shepherd, our Heavenly Father, and Jesus, who called himself the Good Shepherd. I would uh, just take a moment, though, and share again, when we were at the Post Chapel there um, on Fort Myer, getting ready for um, Chaplain Gordon's service, um, I was looking at the stained glass windows there in the chapel, and they're just beautiful, and they represent the different branches of the service. The Coast Guard stained glass window was of Noah building the ark. The Army stained glass window was of Joshua leading the army of God to defeat Jericho. The um, Navy was Jesus sitting in the boat just offshore as he was teaching the crowds. And there were some storm clouds, and so I don't know if it was a combination of calming the storm or whatever it was but that was for the Navy and then the Marines was of Gideon and his army and selecting from the many thousands down to the 300 uh, and of course the Marines are the few the proud you know and then the Air Force and uh, it's beautiful window and all we could figure is it had to have been an Air Force general who signed off on all the windows and approved them because the Air Force was the ascension of Jesus into heaven. <laughs> we thought, there you go, that's getting in the air right there for the Air Force. It was really, it's a very special place. Again, our message is from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 1 through 18. Oh, how we need the shepherd. Several years ago, uh, while we were in Springfield, Missouri, I was pastoring at Temple Baptist Church. And uh, as you know, Springfield, Missouri is the home place of Bass Pro Shop. And at that time, there was only one Bass Pro Shop in, in all of America, and it was right there in Springfield, Missouri. I mean, it was just two miles from our home. People would come to visit us, and it wasn't within 10 minutes. Hey, can you help us go find that Bass Pro Shop? And we'd say, sure, you know. And it's right on this busy thoroughfare. It's called Campbell Avenue, and it's always busy, especially those days because it was the only Bass Pro shop around. And so people coming from all over, they had their boats, they had their RVs. People from all the states were coming to get whatever they were needing from there. Well, I was driving up Campbell one particular day, and I was going south, and Bass Pro Shop was on this side. And as I was going down, about four or five cars ahead of me in this crowd of, of traffic, Right there in the middle of the road was just a frightening sight. There was a little dog out there in the middle of the road. And he was frightened. And, and he was all kind of hunkered down and, and he would try to move and then he'd get back up and he'd get hunkered down again and he'd try to go that way and he was just trying. He somehow got out in the middle of that traffic and here he was having this trouble. Well, as I was getting a little bit closer, all of a sudden he darted through the traffic, got over onto the parking lot there at Bash Pro, and he was just running in circles. He was just so scared. And so I pulled into the parking lot, and I got out of the car, and I walked over toward him as best as I could to try to help calm him down. I was talking to him quietly. I even got down on his level, got down on my knees because, you know, my size, I didn't want to overwhelm him. And, and so I was just trying to call him. I extended my hands quietly and just was calling. And, and he just, you know, he was just so terrified and his eyes were so big. Slowly, he started coming to me. Ever so slowly. He'd come a little bit and then he'd stop. A little bit slower and he'd stop. Finally, he actually came right up to me and sniffed my hands, as you know a dog would do. And, and I was able to put my arms around him, pick him up, and, and then he was just shaking. He was so terrified. Well, because of the collar that he had on, I was able to locate where he was from, his home. And by the end of the day, I was able to deliver him back to his family. And I can't tell you how excited that little dog seemed to be. He just wiggled all over when he recognized his family when he was there. And you know, you think about that. Here's this poor little dog. How did he get into such a mess? I mean, he left a loving family that cared for him, and, and he was so happy to be back with them again. He was back on home turf, and he was no doubt happy about that. It was a family that provided food for him and care for him. You know, he had a shelter and all was good. And he even had a fenced-in backyard for protection. You know, that here, here you can have all of this, but, but here's the barrier. And that barrier's there for your good. It's for your protection. 
How did that little dog get into such a mess? His nose. <laughs> All dogs follow their noses. Don't they? I don't know. Maybe he smelled a barbecue going on down the street. Or maybe something was going on in the yard over there or whatever it must have been. But somewhere in this, he got his nose under the fence, wiggled a bit, and he was gone. And he left behind family. He left behind food. He left behind fence. He left it all behind and he just found himself out there following his nose. And he got himself in trouble. You know, the story of this little dog is a reminder of what happens to you and I. And we also follow our noses too. The Bible tells us, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. In Isaiah chapter 53, The Lord himself through Jeremiah said, My people have become like lost sheep. Oh, how we need the shepherd. Amen. And so our text is from the Gospel of John and I'd like to read this this morning. It's on page 870 in the Pew Bible. Jesus is speaking. There's a bunch of Pharisees hanging out. His disciples are there. And so he says this. He says in verse uh, 1 of chapter 10, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I am the gate of the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Oh, how we need the shepherd. We're talking through a series of messages, and we've been talking on the church. We've talked as the church is the army of God, is the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. And today we're, we're the flock of God. We, we, we are sheep who need a shepherd. And it's interesting to note that as best as I can tell, sheep have never been considered a wild animal. They've always needed a shepherd. Ever since the beginning of creation, sheep have needed someone to provide for them, to care for them, to show them. You see, it tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 4, it says, Abel was a keeper of sheep, Cain worked the ground. Ever since the beginning, sheep have needed a shepherd. Well, we, like sheep, need a shepherd to care for us too. Amen? <laughs> and so let's look at this this morning. How come sheep need a shepherd? Well, sheep are totally dependent upon their shepherd. In verses 2 through 5, we're reminded again how totally dependent we are. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought them all out, he goes on ahead of them. He's leading. And his sheep follow because they know his voice. 
But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. How desperately and we need to depend upon the shepherd. See, shepherds will tend to their sheep. Shepherds will guard their sheep. Shepherds will water, lead, feed. Shepherds will protect their sheep. Everything necessary. This is what the shepherd does. And Jesus is the good shepherd. And he's the one that provides that care for you and I. We are the sheep, every one of us. Now, in order to find this good protection, there's the sheep pen. And this is what Jesus is speaking about here, about he's the gate, the, the door to the sheep, and he provides for them to go in and go out and to be cared for and watch after. And, and there comes a time where in this sort of sheep pen where there might be two, three different flocks of sheep in there overnight, and the shepherds will be at that gate area and they'll sit and be there throughout the evening. And if anything tries to attack the sheep or get over the wall or try to come through, they'll protect them and stop them. If a sheep tries to get out, they'll protect them and stop them. But in the morning when the shepherd calls his sheep, his sheep hear his voice and respond the other sheep belong to another shepherd, and so they don't respond. They will follow the voice, as Jesus is clearly showing us here. If a wild animal or thief came along, he would fight for the sheep. David, as a shepherd, we know, talked about how he defeated a, a lion and defeated a bear to protect the sheep. Killed him with his own hands, he said. If a lamb wandered off, he would search for it. And he knew each of them by name. He knew every one of his sheep. When Diane and I served in Kazakhstan, one of, our, one of our areas of ministry was to see how shepherds could hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And as we would drive from one city to a next or a village to another, we would drive across the plains of Kazakhstan. And you can see for just miles and miles and miles, and there is not a fence anywhere. And you'd see off in the distance there'd be a flock of sheep and goats with one or two shepherds and then over here and up closer. And, and, and how are they ever going to hear that God loves them and Jesus is the Savior? And so Diane had an idea and we started putting together shepherds packs. And each and every one of those packs was just an old, like a Walmart bag, a plastic bag. We put a, a, a liter bottle of water, a loaf of bread, um, a, a big round stick of sausage made out of uh, beef or out of lamb. No pork because predominantly Muslim shepherds. We put some candies in there. And then we had three books. We had a copy of the Bible in Russian, in Kazakh. And, which had just been finished in the Kazakh language, by the way. And, uh, and then we had a book that was Questions Wise Men Ask. And it was a, an apologetic book. It was a, a way of presenting the, the good news of Jesus through the questions that Muslims present when they're trying to deflect about Jesus. And so when you're a shepherd and you're out with, talking with sheep, they don't answer a whole lot. And so to have a book to read, you know, it would, how wonderful. And so those books were, we pray that God brought shepherds to himself through those books. We pray that families came to Christ. Maybe a small village came to Christ. We just put, all, put it all in the Lord's hands. Well, on one particular time, we stopped and we were speaking to a shepherd. We were sitting there on the old plains of Kazakhstan talking to this shepherd. And, and uh, it was just a wonderful time of speaking together. And, and I just asked, well, what's it like being a shepherd? You know, we're from not here, <laughs> and so we're interested in your life. Tell us about it. He goes, oh, he goes, I know all my sheep. I know everyone. I know how many I have. I know their names, and I know their dispositions. And he went on about those sheep, and he says, you know, I know which sheep are the ones that are docile and calm. I know the ones that will headbutt you and bite you if you don't pay attention. He, he just, I know my sheep. And, and that opened the door for us to then take and read from John chapter 10 about a shepherd who knew his sheep as well. And, and this shepherd was just enamored with the story of Jesus. He was presented the gospel. He was given Bibles and a chance to read more as he was hearing for the first time, perhaps, the story of Jesus. Also, the Psalm 23 was read. Now, it's interesting, in the Russian Bible, it's Psalm 22, just because they've numbered them a little bit differently, but, but he was able to hear that psalm. And in Psalm 23, we're reminded just how great the Lord is. He is our shepherd. He watches after us, provides for us. That's how much we need and depend on the shepherd. 
And a part of the shepherd's goal was to have a rod to give protection for the sheep. You know, a rod, maybe about yay long with a knob on the end that could be chucked at any problem that might come along the road, of a wolf or something. Uh, the particular shepherd we were talking to that day had a, a bag on his belt that was full of rocks, little fist-sized rocks, and that's what he used to throw and to try to get away anything that might come about the sheep. And then also there was the staff that gave direction for the sheep. The staff the, from behind, if he needed to prod them a bit and kind of get them going or, or to clear a path or whatever it needed to be or to help a sheep get up out of a ravine. But the staff that also provided direction and most often they'd be out front guiding and leading. How desperately we are totally dependent upon the shepherd. On Thursday nights, the men's Bible study group is reading through as a devotional this year and experiencing God day by day, and every Thursday night, men, you're welcome to join at 6.30. And, um, back on, let's see, February the 27th, this was the devotional, Comfort from the Shepherd, and it spoke about Psalm uh, 23, verse 4, Even though I go through the darkest valley, I will fear no danger, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hear, hear how Henry Blackaby and his son Richard have written this devotional. As a child of God, you are never alone. Your shepherd is with you at all times. You never have to call him into your situation. You never have to wonder where he is. You never have to fear that if things become too difficult, he will abandon you. He goes before you. He walks beside you. He comes behind you. He protects you securely. Just as he sees every sparrow and knows every hair that is on your head, so his gaze is constantly upon you. Even when you cannot see him, he always keeps his eyes upon you. He comforts you with his strong presence in the times of sorrow and grief. He leads you through the valley of the shadow of death. He does not necessarily lead you around the valley as you might wish. There are times when your shepherd knows that the only way to get you where he wants to take you is to lead you down the path that passes through the dark valley. Yet at those times, he walks closely with you, reassuring you on that journey that he still loves you and is with you. It is during those times that you experience his love and compassion in a deeper dimension than you ever have before. You never need to fear evil. As intimidating as evil can be, there is nothing you will ever face that intimidates your shepherd. Woo! Isn't that good? There is nothing you will ever face that intimidates your shepherd. He has seen it all and soundly defeated every form of wickedness. Evil never catches him by surprise. Your shepherd is always prepared and knows exactly when and where you will experience difficulty. Place your absolute trust in your good shepherd that he will protect you and demonstrate his love for you through the darkest of valleys. Oh, how we need the shepherd. And yes, sheep are totally dependent upon the shepherd. Also, sheep need the shepherd because sheep have enemies. Jesus was talking about some of those enemies here in this passage. One of those enemies is the thief. In verse 1, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs over that rock wall and by some other way, is the one who's the thief and the robber. And then down in verse 8 and verse 10, all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be saved. Verse 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Our very first week in Belarus when we went to serve there, um, on the very first Saturday, we went to the open market. Because we were needing to buy some items just to set up a kitchen, just to set up some groceries and get prepared for what was we were launching into our overseas missionary service. And on that Saturday, we're in the market, and I had just come to the end of a row, and Diane um, came around the edge, and as she came around the edge, she got knocked down, 
Somebody had come running just headlong through that market and ran into her, not only ran into her, knocked her down, kicked her in the side, and basically stomped on her and then kept right on running. And then a little more moments later, here come a guy chasing, and it was a thief. And the thief was trying to get away. And my wife was knocked out on the ground. My first instinct was to chase after that guy. But then I was like, what am I going to do if I catch him? I can't tell him anything. I don't know Russian yet. But in, in, in an instant, I knew my responsibility was my wife. Went down and picked her up and held her. And, and she came back around and everything. And uh, got her home to the apartment. And she was just terribly bruised with cracked ribs. And it was just a, a, it was a terrible experience. And you know, that can frighten you when you're in a foreign land, you don't know the country, you, you haven't figured things out yet, and now your wife's damaged, uh, really hurting, and, and she herself. And so this verse, number 10, God gave us while we were in our little apartment with a door locked that hardly worked. <laughs> and it was just, well, we just won't go into all the fun times. Huh? But God said the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy comes to discourage, comes to take away. But I have come that you may have life, have it to the full. And that's how God carried us through for those first several months. And so every time we read that verse, that's our story. We, God said, keep on, keep on, keep on. And so we need the shepherd because the sheep have enemies. There are thieves out there. There are also well, it tells us in the scriptures, excuse me, in 1 Peter, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, what's interesting is that Peter is writing to Christians. He's writing to the church. And so he's saying to born-again Christians, be self-controlled. Be on the alert. Because there's an enemy out there prowling around who wants to try to get you to take your eyes off of the shepherd and to be fearful because of the roar. Do you know why lions roar? It's a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons is so they freeze their prey so they can seize their prey. And the old devil's going to try to roar at us. The old devil's going to try to get his, us to get our eyes off the shepherd and to listen to the clamor and the noise over here. When in truth, we follow the shepherd and we trust the shepherd. Because there are those that would take away. There's the thief. There's also the hired hand. Verse 12 and 13. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I've had jobs in the past where I was ready when it was the end of the working day and you clocked out. Yeah, I'm ready to go home. You know, I'll be there from clocking in to clocking out. But after that, but when it comes to serving the Lord, it's, it's not that way. When it comes for you and I living our life with the Lord and walking by faith with Christ, we don't clock out. We, we continue serving. We continue trusting in our daily lives, in our families, in our church. We trust the Lord. But there would be those who would run away. We pray that God would help us to be faithful. Because the other enemy of the sheep is its own nose. Its own nose. I mean, to where he gets it under the fence, sees there's something better over here, better over there. Wiggles a bit and gets out and finds itself now far away from family, from food, and from fence. Getting into trouble. And so we praise the Lord for how he protects us. The Bible tells us when it comes to our nose, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And it says there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. The Lord will let us make our decisions. He'll let us wiggle under the fence. It's there for our protection. It's a barrier that says, look, here, it's all, this is good. But you can go there if you wish. But oh, how he would desire that we trust him. And if we go out on our own way, we're going to find ourselves in trouble pretty quickly. You know, the best friend of the sheep is the shepherd. 
always been that way and it always will be that way and you and I are sheep and so because of that we need the shepherd and so our best friend is the shepherd Jesus said in verse 7 he said I'm the gate or I'm the door of the sheep what he meant by that is that he is the only way he said I tell you the truth I'm the gate for the sheep he is the way the one way that we find all the answers and provision for our lives that we need. He went on to say he also is the good shepherd. In verse 11 and 14, he said in 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus is the shepherd. As he's the head of the church, he's also the shepherd of the church. All of us, you and I, we follow him as our shepherd. Do you remember that little dog I talked about earlier? <laughs> he was running wild, scared, terrified, found himself trapped in a place where he didn't want to be. How was he rescued? Somebody came along, got down on his level, and quietly and patiently called, and was willing to take whatever time it took until that little one came into that one's arms and was able to be delivered home. What's going on in your life right now? What's going on in your situations? Do you feel a little bit like that little dog? Do you feel like you're kind of running scared? Do you feel kind of like that you're, you've gotten out way beyond the, the realm of protection and you find yourself running maybe a little bit loose? Are you confused, frightened, overwhelmed? You know, it is normal to feel that way when you're a lost sheep. But the glorious thing is that the Lord calls us. He calls our name. We hear his voice. And when he's calling, he's inviting us back into the fold, back to the flock, to, to walk with him, to trust him, and to allow him to provide for all that he desires to do. See, Jesus, the good shepherd, is calling. And in order for us to respond, we, we must realize who we are. You know, it says, my people have become like lost sheep. When I recognize I'm a lost sheep, I've, I've wiggled under defense and I'm over here dabbling in this and I don't need to be, I need to come to the Lord and ask to Him to provide and to care. See, when I know I'm a lost sheep, I know that I need to come to the Lord. And now we could use this evangelistically. Someone who's never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior is a lost sheep. They're without the Lord. And so they need to come. But it also can be for someone who has found himself as a born-again believer out on the fringe. And God is calling them back. So realize who you are. Where are you in, in this? Recognize where you are. Lord, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. I've been there, done that. More than once. And I've asked the Lord to draw me back to Him once again. And every time, He's faithful. And He does. Realize who you are, a lost sheep. Recognize where you are, astray. And respond to the call of the shepherd. The scriptures tell us, for you were like a sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Oh, what a great place to be. That little dog, when I finally got him back to the home where he had been lost from, and he recognized his family, he was happy all over. <laughs> and when you find yourself at peace with God, no longer on the fringe, back in with him in charge, following and trusting, when you find yourself there, oh, you've returned to the shepherd, the overseer of your souls, and there's no greater peace than that. Jesus is the good shepherd, and he gave his life for you. Verse 17 and 18, it says, The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from the Father. What that means is that, yes, the Romans crucified him on the cross. Yes, the Jewish uh, crowd cried, crucify him. Yes, others wagged their heads and tongues at him when he was on the cross. But Jesus willingly gave his life. He allowed them to take 
and put him on the cross. You see, he didn't give up his life until he said into the heavens, it is finished. He was in charge. And so he had the authority to lay down his life. He had the authority to take it up again. Easter is just a few short weeks away. He took it up again. But now look over in verse 24 through 30. The Jews gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. What a promise from the Lord. It tells us in the book of Hebrews, these final words from God's word. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, May he equip you with every good thing for doing his will. May he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, how we need the shepherd. Dear sheep, what is God saying to you this day? Do you hear him calling your name? Do you know you need to respond? To come in from wherever? And come to the shepherd this day. We're going to sing an invitation hymn. It's number 161. The title of it is Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. And we're going to sing the first two verses. And as we sing these verses, whether you're here in the sanctuary or in the fellowship hall, as a sheep, you find yourself in need to return to the shepherd, I invite you to come and let's pray and let's let God be God in your life. If you're a sheep who's walking with the Lord, we rejoice with you. And may the peace of the Lord be upon you. Well, whatever prayer it might be, it can be a prayer there in the pew. You and the Lord can do business this morning. I pray that you will. Let's pray and then we'll sing. Lord, we do call on you like a shepherd to lead us, to guide us, to help us, to be our strength when we're weak, to pick us up when we fall to provide that protection before, beside, and behind. Lord, we need you. We confess our need for you. We confess, Lord, that we need you to be our shepherd. Would you be so in our life, in our families, in our church? Yes, even in our nation. Thank you, shepherd. Good shepherd. Great shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing. And as we sing, if God is speaking to you for a decision this morning, we invite you to come.
seated.